Good morning, folks. We've got some cool eye candy today. There are new videos from Sky Scholar, and we'll discuss penetrating electric fields from solar storms. But we are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find a much calmer day. We've had a few more M-class solar flares, impulsive, a small filament snap at the northern incoming active region, but in general, it's a much quieter sun right now than what we saw over the weekend and late last week. In addition to the sunspots, which are still being monitored, the plasma filaments are starting to catch my attention, like this one incoming on the south, set high in the corona. Those ones have a higher tendency to erupt, and so I'm watching that one closely as it turns into face the earth here this week. Let's start the eye candy with Meerkat. You know, this device doesn't get as much hype as others, but it's done some of the coolest things since it was built. In just a short three-hour observation, it discovered 49 new distant galaxies. That's a pretty outstanding feat, and it was done so in just one tiny area of the sky. We also have Hubble's long-range view of how Supernova 1987A has changed over time. They are keen to study its dynamics because the rate of change in post-nova features is still largely a mystery. Here we see how much it has dimmed from 2009 to 2022, top left to bottom right, meaning the entire feature may become invisible in just a few generations. Folks, there are two new Sky Scholar videos out in the last week. Dr. Robitaille is absolutely crushing astrophysics these days and is one of my highest recommendations to subscribe here on YouTube. Link is below. It's his two latest videos on the docket today. Lastly, folks, we showed this graphic from the solar storm a few days ago, the most extreme moment of induction geoelectric hazard. Part of the process that triggered it was a penetrating electric field, so I want to applaud these scientists for continuing to study one of the most important aspects of space weather. This online preprint, which will be published in hard copy next month, details how they tracked a significant event three years ago where a rapid solar storm magnetospheric impact to the low and mid-latitude ionosphere took place. This is the key to how solar storm energy enters the polar region but still manages to rapidly impact the entire world. Here's another great example from 2003. We will be going over the event two days ago in a special video soon. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.